Who put the glad in gladiator? Hercules, 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 Hercules. <laughs> yes, all that and more on this episode of My Disney Addiction Podcast. Oh, yeah. All right. What up, ladies and gents? Hello, Disney addicts. It is Chris, your number one ghost and host. And Greg, your Disney detective. Hey, guys. I hope you guys would come back. The last episode was a game. Uh, Greg beat me. Yes! In sudden death, mind you, of Guess That Disney Song. Oh, that was a rough one. That was Dude, chicken I, little, man. I'm still on a high. I'm still on a high off of that one. If you haven't watched that episode, go back. It'll be in the link uh, um, in the description below. But yeah, uh, before we get too deep into this episode, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my Disney Addiction Podcast. That's what's up. That's what's up. But yes, I know. It was such a fun game. I think we're going to do more of those. Yeah, we should do more of those. That yes. Was, it's going to be fun. There was a lot of... There was a couple of them where I was like, ah, I cannot believe I did not get that. I know. The last one, I, I knew I was not going to get it. because I. That one just was a hodgepodge of, of very well-educated guesses, and it just turned out to be in my favor. It was good, it was good. It was amazing. All so right, thanks guys. to Allison. We are going to be uh, jumping into like a little one-off here. Yes. Maybe we might just do some of the uh, some just one-off movies, because technically we talked about the Disney Renaissance. We did, way back when. And so we're going to hit one of the movies that we did not broach on that episode's series is series of episodes series yeah Some and section. that would be the one the only hercules 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 my... hercules hercules <laughs> yeah dude i love that movie <laughs> it's so great dude, that's it's so great movie. but yeah hercules is my favorite disney animated film this, this is hercules is definitely a good one i mean i love danny devito i mean oh. how can you not love danny devito come on i know He's in a lot of great things, and I, I mean, I'm just a huge fan of Greek mythology, Roman mm. mythology in Greek. general. Good stuff, Pete. Yes, I know. Good so, stuff. Hercules was released in 1997, uh, directed by uh, Ron Clemens and and someone else. They tag teamed it. I do apologize for the other one. So, someone Musker, and uh, they, I, I believe, first did The Little Mermaid, and they really wanted to do Treasure Island, like. Yeah. A, a, a different take on that classic book. And Disney was like, you know what? Have a couple more movies under your belt, see how those go, and then we'll give it to you. And so finally, later on, they were able to do a Treasure Island sort of tale called Treasure Planet, but this ain't the episode for that. That's coming. We're gonna go back to their second directorial uh, movie of Hercules, and it was, it's, I believe, one of the most underrated Disney Renaissance movies. It is a hidden gem. For so many reasons. I don't feel like it's a hidden gem. I mean, it, it feels like like when you're in the Disney parks, you get a lot of characters, yeah. right, that you want to take pictures with. The Hercules cast or characters, you rarely see. Yeah, I don't think don't I have seen a Hercules or a Meg or a Hades. So they're definitely underutilized there. Mm. And in like promotional stuff, I was surprised that when I got my Disney Plus account, I was able to choose a Hercules icon. So you want to know who I chose? Who? Jack Skellington. Okay, I am not yep, not surprised there. That's very fitting. Yeah. It's very fitting. But yeah. So I mean the movie I mean I think it's a great movie. I love the idea of it. I mean I think um, the look of it is really cool. Yes, it's a it's a, I was just telling my girlfriend this earlier. I really do love how Disney uh, changes up their art, art styles for every movie. It's yeah. something different. They they go deep into whatever source material that they're working with. Like, you know, the Hercules art design is is steeped in Grecian art mm -hmm. and, and, and ancient Rome or ancient Roman art. And it's really, really cool. Very angular, a little bit more cartoony. Yeah. Um, love it, I love it. So, Greg, give us a rundown of this movie. Kind oh. of what happens here. Okay. Quick rundown. So, um, Hercules, he's a demigod. He becomes a demigod because Hades, uh, he wants to, um, do a coup on Mount Olympus and take over um, Zeus. So um, he talks with the fates and the fates are like, there's this one, um, this one hero that will emerge that will 
uh, throw a wrench in your plan. And he goes by the name of Hercules. And he's like, wait, Hercules, that's, that's my brother's son that was just born. And so he's like, I will not let anybody stand in my way. So he gets his little minions, Pain and Panic, to steal him from Mount Olympus and kill him. Yep. Uh, by drinking poison that would only kill a god. And so they, they, you know, shove the bottle of well, poison. Well, the poison doesn't kill him. The poison makes him mortal. It was going to kill him because he has to drink every last drop. But the, like, the but farmers no, no, it's, scare him and then the poison... Oh, no, you're no, right. The poison, the poison makes him mortal and he they will kill him. Because he has right. pain and panic. How do you kill a god? You're right. And then they're like, you can't because he's immortal. You're right. And that's he's like, that's right. The first thing you need to do is turn the little sunspot mortal. Mortal. You're, okay, you're right. So the poison turns the him actual mortal. Line. Yeah, that was actually impressive. Um, so you're right. He he turns his plan is to turn Hercules mortal, and then pain and panic will kill him. Um, he doesn't drink every last drop because um, these the, 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 farmers yeah, uh, scare this, pain and panic. Hercules' adopted parents yes. essentially find him. Yep, and then uh, he's still very very strong. He grows up. Um, and what are the chances the last drop kept that godlike strength? Mm. Right? Mm. Very mm. coincidental. But hey, that's how the movie goes, and I am here for it. But anyway, um, in the background, you have the muses sing in sort of like gospel choir esque music that sort of tells you that, you know, his, his uh, story as he's growing up, all this stuff. And I love how they infuse that kind of like music style in yeah, and style into the movie because it, it was a great segue into the next you know part of the story. So anyway, you have Hercules, he doesn't know his own strength, yada, yada, yep. yada. Um, he wants to always be a hero, um, quickly finds out that he is the son of Zeus. So he goes to Philatides, mm -hmm. uh, who's played by Danny DeVito, because uh, he, you know, quote unquote, trained all the great heroes, but they always had one um, Achilles heel, so to speak, yeah. one one little uh, foil that would just totally destroy them. But Hercules um, ends up, um, what's the word I'm looking for? He ends up proving himself over and over again, becomes a star, sort of lets that sort of get to his head, but he also finds out, finds this wonderful girl who is actually working for Hades. Plot so twist. I know, so at first about. she's all about, you know, um, trying to suck Hercules in so Hades can further destroy him, but then she develops feelings for him. Hercules fell hook, line, and sinker for this girl. Her name is Megara, or Meg. The first time he saw her, um, and it was just, again, tests after tests that Hades put Hercules tr through to try to kill him. Um, finally, at the end of the movie, Hercules makes a deal with the devil to get immortal um, for 24 hours, and that was when Hades was planning on taking over Mount Olympus. Um, then the only caveat is that he would, he would, uh, stay mortal unless Meg would get hurt. Yeah. Uh, Meg ends up sacrificing herself for Hercules. She got hurt, therefore his strength was restored, and then he stops the Titans from destroying Mount Olympus and Hades taking over. Um, and then he, uh, of course, saves Meg in, in the Well of Souls in, uh, in uh, Hades, underground, um, uh, underworld, I should say. So um, a lot of action in that movie, a lot of uh, moral, um, justification a lot of moral high ground or just moral issues that this movie does evoke so a lot of things going on um a huge fan of the movie though yep yeah yep. it's a good movie i definitely liked it what do you think the best scene in the movie was oh um honestly the best scene of the movie i really do like uh the first scene that sort of Hades controls, it's when he's down in the underworld and he's talking with the fates. Oh, yeah. Yes, I really like that that banter that he has with with uh, the three fates. I know, <laughs> you know. I know, you know. I know. I got it. I got it. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's just, I love how they test his temper, but yet he really needs them, so he's also nice to them. So, but honestly, any scene with James Wood, yeah. he plays Hades, is just a knockout for me. That it's guy, he one. steals the show. Favorite one. Disney villain. Um, How about you? What's your favorite scene? Favorite scene in the movie. There's a few good scenes. Um, I think my favorite scene is after there's the montage of Hercules beating all the monsters and sure. stuff like that, and he's training in the Coliseum. He's like, gonna work out and all this stuff, and people are watching. And then Hades is watching from like a mountain, you know, way. And then yes. he's like, he's like, 
he's like, you know, doing like target practice, you know, like and all that stuff. Okay. He's like, he's like, he's like, I don't know what I've thrown everything I have at this guy, and the, and he looks down and uh, Payne has like sandals on, <laughs> and then he's like, he's like, he's essentially going to his like, you know, like. This whole plan I've been working on for 18 years is about to go up in smoke, and you're wearing his merchandise. <laughs> and then, and then, pa and then uh, panic is sucking slurps. on a on a soda or something for a Hercules yeah. like copper or whatever. Yeah, then he just like explodes. Yep. And I was like, yes, I love that. <laughs> and then they show like a a, a far out view of Hades literally just exploding, like, like the mountain top, just like. Yeah. Then and I think it was like Hercules and Pegasus were like putting their hands in like. The cement or whatever, maybe that was. No, that was in the song. montage. Okay, but yeah, they were doing something with fans, and then they're like, "Oh, okay, whatever." <laughs> no, yeah, so that's a great scene. I as love well. that one. Um, but honestly, any scene that involves um, a song from from that movie. Um, Do you have a, a favorite song from Hercules? I don't know if I have a. F it would have to it's be the whole album, honestly. Zero to Hero is my favorite song, but I think my wife's favorite song on that is I Won't Say I'm In Love. Mm, yep. So. I know, I was gonna say that. That is a, a definite runner up for me. I, for some reason, like Go the Distance. It's a great pump up song. The movie song or the Michael Bolton version? The movie song. The movie. The no. Michael Bolton song does not do it for me, unfortunately. Michael Bolton! I mean, getting no love. No, I mean, I'm a fan of, of, of Bolton. Um, he definitely has a good voice, has some good songs, but. Not for this Disney song, unfortunately. The better song, though, is the Spanish version by Ricky Martin. Ricky Martin. And if you have time, definitely check out his music video for that. There are pyrotechnics involved. I will. Technics that are pyro. Yes. Fire. So, now, as far as it comes to like Hercules, do you have an idea of why do you feel like that's kind of gotten like? I don't want to say like push to the side. Yeah, that's a really good question. I mean, because on the list of like favorite Disney movies, you know, like from our generation, like not many people like 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 we said in the Disney Renaissance, what we thought the top five were, like Tarzan and Hercules missed out. They did. Like I think people like Hercules more than Tarzan, but I think people I like the soundtrack more from Tarzan than Hercules. Yes. Yeah, it's it's one of those. Uh, both soundtracks are in my top two, um, and I do fluctuate between them uh, quite often. So I definitely can understand that. Yeah. But again, I I mean, again, I don't know if it's because of the source material that they're taking from, because I mean, when you think of Mulan, that is from like Chinese legend and everything else. So it's not like it's it's different. It's like oh, they're they're doing a. I don't know. I I, I, just, I really don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. I think, <clears throat> I think, I think the thing was, at that time, Pixar was starting to come out with a lot of stuff. Because mm. like think about it, like near the end of the Renaissance, Pixar really got into their stride. You're right. It was like a, there was a slight overlap of a couple of years. Yeah. But Pixar was definitely gaining speed. You're right. You're right. So I think that would be the. That's big a thing. really good idea. That's yeah. That's my only thought yeah. behind it. Yeah, I'm gonna go with that one too because that was when Disney also started to experiment with doing a different kind of musical storytelling. Like with Tarzan, the main characters don't sing. What about Trash in the Can? Yeah, I mean that, that's not, that's not really like singing, singing. Right, that's more just like a pickup sort of yeah. song. Like oh, they're just you know doing a lot of percussion. So yeah. um, it was Hercules. one of those. Yeah, I, I would probably have to say it was the, the change in animation style. People were really starting to gravitate more towards right. like the Pixar style. I think you're right. Because then during that time period, Shrek also came out. Yeah, there was a lot like, going on with other lot, studios. Like digital animation started becoming a huge thing. Yeah, you're right. Because you got to remember the first five uh, Renaissance movies, like Little Mermaid was pretty much all regular animation. Yeah. But then with Beauty and the Beast, they started trying out something new with digital animation. And what, you, like, if you see it, you're not gonna really notice much of it because it's still general. Like, a lot of it's pretty much regular animation. But once you start getting to like um, Aladdin and Lion King, like any of the scenes inside the cave and that stuff, like when like oh, the lava's right. happening, that's like a lot of CG, like digital animation. The right. Same thing with the Lion King, especially with that stampede, that Wildebeest stampede. Yeah, it took them like I think that specific scene was like a year 
for yeah. them to uh, create technology to handle that kind of scene. So I think all of a sudden, like, the Disney Renaissance, they were so good because they were like really great animation. And there was some digital animation thrown in there, but not as much as all of a sudden you get Pixar in uh, 1995. Right. So in 1995, Pixar comes out. And that blew the world away. People were like, what? And then people started gravitating towards that because it was like, this looks so amazing. Because then, like I said, you have Shrek, you have that, you have Ants, you got a Bug's Life. I mean, because Ants wasn't Disney, but that's st- that came out six months before Bug's Life did. Thanks to what Jeffrey Katzenberg and he was little, he's like trying to spike yeah. Disney. He's like, okay, let's let's do a very similar and then, movie. But then you have that. I mean, how? <clears throat> I think. No, when did Hercules come out? You said ninety-seven. <clears throat> ninety-seven. So, as you were talking, I was thinking about a potential other reason why it doesn't get as much acclaim. I mean. Of course, The Lion King was 94, and then you went into 95 with Pocahontas, but like you said, Pixar came out. Pocahontas was still a fairly popular, um, you know, Disney movie, yeah. but then you went into Hunchback in 96, and I think that sort of dropped it down. Um, and then Hercules potentially was the next one that I think maybe revitalized it, because in 98, Mulan came out, and that was a popular one. 98, everybody liked right? Mulan. So I think Hercules, you know, sort of restored faith in the Renaissance period, because Hunchback, Granted, I haven't seen it in like over two decades, but... Like visually, I think it's really good, but it was dark. Yeah, exactly. It's a dark movie. It's a dark movie. So I think that took away some of the uh, excitement for Disney animated movies. And Hercules sort of brought it back. But again, it I think it had to take time for us to see that excitement right. get back. And yeah, Mulan but, was the one that... Yeah, that Mulan power. brought it back, but then Tarzan came out and that didn't do it. Right, anything. you're right. Yes, yeah, so maybe Mulan was the blip. But again, Disney was trying something different with Tarzan. Because, like I said, they, they yeah. it was a story not centered around people um, singing or characters singing. So it's not really like a musical. It was just more like a story with a really kick butt soundtrack. Yeah, it was a really great. It was a great soundtrack, but I don't feel like people. I feel like people had a harder time connecting with the characters than they did with like the original Renaissance. Yeah, and I think that was the thing. Like people started finding it harder. Where like right. I feel like. Hercules and Mulan, they definitely started getting that. With Mulan, they definitely did. Yeah. Because of like the characters. Right. But uh, well, there wasn't much singing in Mulan either. No, like you like, have like, reflection. But but she didn't sing it. Mulan didn't sing it. That yeah. was in the background. No, she did. Oh, she did, she did, yeah. she did, she did. She, she did. also sang um, a part of Girl Worth Fighting For. A little bit, yeah. Yeah. And then Shang, you got with uh, I'll Make a Man Out of You. Almost. I mean, yeah. yeah. And then the matchmaker. You're yeah. Likely. So, so I guess, I guess, yeah, because that brought it back to more of that style. It did. It was, it was more traditional Disney. Yeah. Hercules mm-hmm. was a little bit in there. You're right. Because I think there was only one song that Hercules actually sings, and it's "Go the Distance." Go the distance. You have Meg's song. Yep. You have and the Philatides. Right. Uh, one last hope. One last hope. But you don't have. Other than that, the muses are pretty much the same. They carry the songs yeah. because the song for them are, is literally the storyline. So, yeah. I think that was, again, phenomenal. So, so I think, yeah, I mean, it's, it's tough. It, there's going to be no exact way to ever figure that answer out. Yeah, exactly. But, but I mean, uh, go, yeah, circling back to Hercules, yeah, uh, Hades is my favorite Disney villain out of any movie. It's just the way that he plays him. Like, you know, the, the god of the underworld, like, you expect him to be, like, really morose or evil and just, like, really dead. But he brings so much liveliness, which is so ironic to that character. Yeah. It's like, he's like the perfect stand up comedian, you know? And it's so ironic that he's, like, quick, fast paced, like, yes. quick speaking. Yeah, that, you like know, it. like, he rules the dead, but yet he's one of those guys who's like so upbeat and it's like he needs an audience. I find that yeah. like a really cool dichotomy. Yeah, I thought it but, was But um, it, very, very good plot, uh, great voice acting as per usual with Disney movies. Yep. Um, let's see what else. Did you have a lot of like merchandise of Hercules growing up? Because I know that um, like I was all into it. Well, when Hercules came out, I remember a lot of the toys from like McDonald's. Yes. Toys and stuff like that. Um, I got this big figure where um, it came with these little like, peel-on tattoos that you mm. could put on Hercules, yeah. and then if you leave them out in the sun, the the tattoos change a different color. So I, I, I thought that was pretty that. cool. I remember the I remember the one toy from uh, McDonald's that I really liked was the Hydra. Oh yeah, the Hydra was really yeah. Cool. That was a good one. Um, I think overall with the movie though, I think 
I mean, I really liked the Titans. I think the way they represented the Titans oh. looked really cool. Yes. Um, as opposed to like other movies with Titans. Sure. Um, I think though the reason why I don't think it did also so well, I think where like, so like it was, I don't want to say it was a boys movie, right? Because Aladdin was a main character. He was a boy, and so right. was um, Simba. He was a boy. And uh, Hunchback. And Hunchback, but Hunchback was saying like that one really. Did. Right. But Hunchback. I'm trying to think of like the main Renaissance movies because I think like Aladdin. Once again, was very relatable, and then so was the Lion King, because like anybody could almost relate to that. Because I mean, it was true. I mean, it's an animal. I mean, granted, it's a boy, but like, it's like an animal. Yeah, I think it also helped with that story. It was a yeah. very driving story. Yeah, but I think with Hercules, though, like it's relatable, but almost like not right, because it's like well, this is like almost like Greek mythology. It's oh, supposed sure. to be. Sure. It's supposed to draw you in, but it's not as relatable. Yeah, and when you think about it, yeah, to your point, it's like the relatability of the characters to you. It's like I'm nowhere on the same level as a demigod, but I can sort of understand Aladdin's, you know, situation of being dirt you know, poor dirt and trying poor, to be with, trying to survive. Yeah, you know, and like fawning after this princess, you know, like, oh my god, I'd love to be a, a prince, whereas on the other side of the wall, you have Jasmine who's like, oh my gosh, like, I hate being a princess, I want something else out of life. So, so like, like, you really feel for those characters. And, you have and that some, sense of, yeah, you have that sense of, like, blue-collar worker yeah. who's, like, living paycheck to chick paycheck yeah. versus, like, the people, like, that are very rich, and people are like, oh, they just have it easy, but then people don't see, like, yeah, I have a lot of money, but it's like I get followed everywhere I go. I can't do what I want. Yeah, like I don't have marriages. I don't have certain freedoms that well, not even like arranged marriages. I'm just starting to like in our world right, today. Even right. it's like like think about people who have a lot of money. Say, oh, you have it so easy. I'm like, yeah, you have it easy, but you're not allowed to go certain places. You're always on the lookout. People are always trying to get a hold of you. People are always trying to use you. Right. Like there's so it's like that. Like you said, that essence of like no matter which side of the line you sit on, you kind of agree with that and then like the lion king it's just a coming to adulthood with taking responsibility that anybody yes. could agree with yeah but like how do you become a hero right well and like zoo says it's about what's in your heart and that's the true measure of a hero which is like yeah true but like, How it's really go... still really hard to go ahead and do that. Yes, it's better, yeah, and then, you know, he goes off and he trains with a half man, half goat. It's like, okay, like, yeah. that, like, this is a cool story, I can't really relate, but it's fun to watch, and I think that's sort of what just resonated with me. It's like a very cool action story that, again, it's just, it's a story that Disney um, put back into play about these classic tales that have... You know, been going on for centuries and centuries. So yeah, I'm hoping they come out with a live action for that one because I yes. really, because I really want to see the Titans done real well. That would be an epic yeah. battle at Mount Olympus. Yes, I know because they've they've sent out dream casts where like Chris Pratt is Hercules and Anna Kendrick is Megara, and I'm like, and then Jeff Goldblum is oh, Hercules, yeah. Zeus the, or Hades. Hades. Yeah, Jeff Goldblum is Hades. So yeah, uh, yeah I mean with with. With the current trend of Disney live action remakes, I'm not a huge fan of what they've done. So I really hope that when they do tap Hercules on the shoulder and say, hey, let's give this a shot, that they do it right by by the fans. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see. I don't know. I'm iffy about the live action on that one. Yeah. The only thing I want to see done well, I want to see the, these Titans done really well. Because, yes. all right, you know, like Clash of the Titans, War of the Titans, and then like... Oh, wait, Wrath of the Wrath Titans? Wrath of the Titans yes. and all that stuff. And yes. then Clash of the Titans, and then you have Immortals. Like, the movies that have what the Titans represent, what they look sure. like. It's like, oh, that's really cool, it's really cool. I would love to see Disney's version of these Titans that are almost like elemental creatures. Yes. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Again, yeah, I, I really agree with you on how I... How the, the design of those characters so came like, to be, and I I would love to see like Hades like in a, I mean because I've seen Hades in Once Upon a Time. Oh yeah, I still have yet to watch that show. I'm so behind. But like I want to see Hades, and, and like the the graphics on it isn't the best because yeah. it's a TV show, TV right? TV show. But like a movie, and I want to see him look like. Super cool. Like I don't want them to be too cartoony and too clowny. I like still that, want the blue flame hair. No, I do, but I, I want it to be. Want I want it to look more menacing. Like sure. almost like 
uh, Will Smith's genie. It was like, you looked good in it. It was still too cartoony for me. Yeah. Like, and people are like, oh, well, you want to go back to the cartoon? I'm like, the cartoon was supposed to look like a cartoon. I wanted the genie to look more realistic. Sure. Blue. You looked way too cartoony. Yeah. Still. Um, I can relate. But, like, so I'm, I would like to see some things like that in the live action movie. Um, I don't know. I feel like the movie overall, I feel like it would go really fast paced and then instantly go slow pace. You know? Because, like, all of a sudden, we'd be going really, really fast with Zeus up on the top of Mount Olympus, sure. Hercules is born, Hades is down there hatching this plan. And then it gets really slow. We gotta steal the kid, and then he's growing up slowly. Who am I? Goes to meet Zeus, has to go find Phil, and then a song comes in, and then it's then there's like some momentum, blah 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 blah, and then they get to go and try to go to uh, I think it was Thieves, Thieves, to go, yeah, to the big uh, olive to do that, and then they run into Meg, and like all that happens. And then they get to the Hydra, which is really cool. And then, like, the montage, I'm like, okay, so there's some actions. Things are moving. And all of a sudden, it slows down a lot because then he has to, like, you now you're famous. And then, you and then it becomes more of, like, a love story with, with Meg. Meg. And then it's like, okay, you love Meg and blah, blah, blah. Then Hades is there. Then there's, like, a quarter of the movie is, like, this just long, has to make this work out. And then the Titans come. And then it's big and fighting and all this stuff. So it's like, there's a weird section in the middle. I'm like, ah, it just doesn't. Sure. I don't know. That's no, I can me. see that. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I definitely can see That's that. That's just me. Yeah. But overall, I mean, a good movie. Fair, fair spot on my top of, uh, of, of Disney movies. So I know that yours is The Lion King and it will never change. Well, I think everybody would agree The Lion King is the pinnacle of the Disney Renaissance. Yeah, I think in overall mass awareness yeah lion king definitely is is the number one yeah so all right you guys we were talking a little bit about hercules once again make sure you like comment subscribe let us know what your thoughts are about hercules we would love to know once again make sure that you do like and subscribe so that way you can get more of our content that's right ring that notification bell if you want to hear of any updates when we post because this is good quality stuff fun, 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 fun fun stuff but yeah thanks so much for listening Thanks for being a part of the Disney Attic community. And this is your only place to get your Disney fix. Peace. Peace. Who put the Glad in Gladiator? All that and more. <laughs> I messed it up. I had no idea what the intro was. What was it? <laughs>